<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today I'm going to be discussing regional firmware restrictions on the Flipper Zero. Uh, and I want to talk about whether this will really restrict your ability to use your Flipper Zero to the fullest, or if unlocking your firmware is really just about the bloodlust of hacking culture and the need to have complete and unfettered access to your hardware and control of your hardware, which to be clear, I don't think is necessarily wrong. It's just a very large responsibility in this particular case. So uh, these regional firmware locks on the Flipper Zero stem from uh, the you know, fact that there are governing bodies throughout the globe uh, who are tasked with regulating communication and electronics. Uh, and one of the things that they're tasked with is parsing out uh, radio frequencies for different use cases. In Flipper Zero, we are using a sub gigahertz radio. Uh, and so we are not exempt from any of the regulations that are set out for radio frequencies. <clears throat> now, that, I mean, different radio frequencies are set aside for different things, air traffic control, uh, fire, police, EMS, space communication, uh, commercial radio, like your favorite, you know, uh, music radio stations or talk radio, uh, as well as like public bands that are uh, set up for like ham radio operators. And these all require a license to broadcast on. Even ham radio operators require a license. It's important that they have that. Now, there are some unlicensed areas, uh, famously be Wi-Fi, so you don't need to have a license to operate your home Wi-Fi, uh, your, uh, your home like router. Wi you know, or, or Wi-Fi access point, but uh, the other space where that would be IoT, or the sub gigahertz range, which is why it's so popular for IoT devices. Uh, you, you don't have to have a license to use an IoT, you know, you know sub gigahertz remote, you know, uh, and this makes it really appealing. However, just because it's unlicensed doesn't mean it's unrestricted. Smartly, a lot of these governing bodies, a lot of these countries really have kind of banded together to create local or to create like regional um, standards. Uh, unfortunately, those regional standards are not like internationally standardized. So there are differences throughout the, the various regions in sometimes even down to the specific countries. Uh, and that can that's why that leads to like the the kind of regional nature of the firmware locks that we run into. Uh, but that also means that different things are set aside for different reasons in different places. And it's important to recognize that we'll get to that in a second. Now, especially in the IoT realm or the sub gigahertz realm, it's important to recognize that there are reasons why we shouldn't be transmitting in certain spaces. Now, even the community firmwares that allow you to unlock your sub gigahertz radio uh, are very clear to state that you need to know the local medical range, medical device range, uh, and stay out of it because uh, interfering on that range could have really negative ramifications on somebody's life-saving or life-sustaining medical devices. Uh, it is very important to stay out of that. And I'm sure that there are other, other spaces that you could also get in trouble with. But it's also important to recognize that it is illegal to broadcast outside of the allocated space uh, for, for commercial devices in your area, in your region. Uh, and I think when I first ran into this issue, right, let's go check it out. So I was basically being a little bit of a script kitty. I had downloaded a bunch of these signals and I went to go use them and I was upset when I received this error. Uh, I'll see, you know, this transmission is blocked. I can't uh, you know, transmit on this in this region. Uh, and I was frustrated because I felt like I was being denied access to something super cool. And if they were denying it, then that means I must be something really awesome underneath there. Uh, but what I've come to understand is that, you know, I was downloading these different uh, signals from uh, from uh, an international repository. This is an international device. And throughout the globe, people are capturing different signals and sharing them with other people. But that also means that you might be trying to transmit something that was not intended for your local region. Right. Uh, and that means that none of the IoT devices in your area would have been able to receive that properly in the first place, right? They don't sell devices in your area that would transmit on this particular frequency. 
Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be restricted from it. You'd be, uh, it would happily allow you to, to send this signal. Uh, and that was the thing that I would think I was missing is I was like, I'm being restricted, but I wasn't necessarily being restricted. The only outcome would have been that I could be uh, illegally tra or tra or transferring on a radio or illegally broadcasting on, on this radio frequency. And the, the only outcome would be that I would have an unintended consequence. Because uh, as I said earlier, nothing locally would be able to receive this in the appropriate or intended way. So that's really important to recognize. Uh, you're not really missing out on anything by having these restrictions in place. And in fact, the restrictions are in place so that idiots like me don't inadvertently just uh, blast up something that, that you know, and interfere with somebody's really important uh, service, whatever that service might be or whatever that device might be. Uh, and ultimately, what I think this is, is really a showcase of the power and potential of Flipper Zero, because yes, you are sold this device, and yes, when you receive it, you are not allowed to transmit, but uh, this device is not just a, a hacking device, it is a hackable device, the hallmark uh, of uh, something devised and developed by hackers themselves. So in fact, you can purchase this device and change to a community firmware and unlock all of the regional uh you know these regional locks and be able to broadcast on whatever you want but you have to be careful that now opens you up to a lot of problems one uh you could uh, be broadcasting illegally or you will be broadcasting illegally uh, and that could get you into trouble uh, and then there's also the possibility of uh, unintended consequences, right? And that's one of the things about hacking in general. You have to be aware of the unintended consequences of your actions, uh, and you know, making sure that you're you're not leaving a trail or path of uh, just awful crap behind you because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, and so, the only reason I can really imagine that you would want to unlock your firmware in any sort of reasonable capacity is maybe if you're an international traveler, you're constantly traveling back and forth and back and forth, and you don't want to keep uh, changing your firmware to, to whatever the local region is. But the harsh reality of that is that you have to be incredibly careful about what signals you choose to use at that point, because a signal that might work great in the United States uh, might actually be in the medical device range of Europe or the, you know, vice versa or, you know, medical device range in Africa, you know, Asia, whatever. Uh, actually, I think Europe and Africa have the, have the same region, but regardless, uh, you have to be really careful once you unlock this radio uh, to make sure that you're not doing something that could, um, you know, mess up uh, or, uh, you know, have unintended consequences. Uh, so TLDR or whatever, uh, the Flipper Zero firmware restrictions are great. Uh, They're a great bumper for new users because frankly, this device isn't necessarily being sold to experienced hackers. Uh, many, ex you know, high, not high level, probably low level, right? As, as the, the, the terminology goes, but uh, th these are not being sold to like big name hackers. These are big time hackers. These are being sold to kids really. And a lot of kids who are just really interested in turning off a projector at school or, uh, you know, turning off some TVs at Walmart and then getting a kick out of a practical joke. And they don't really need to have access to all the different device ranges. This is an advanced uh, or the, the, the different frequency ranges. This is an advanced feature and uh, it should be advanced. It should be behind a wall of knowledge. Uh, but the cool thing about Flipper Zero is that if you want to learn it, you can do it and you can add your own custom firmware and you can expand and change the, the, the use case of this device to something completely unintended by the original creators. Uh, that's the power of Flipper Zero. So if you stuck around, thanks for hanging out. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, think about this when you're, when you're going to, to get your Flipper Zero and, and you know, if you find, if you find it frustrating, uh, that you're being denied access to certain things, uh, just recognize that it's it's likely you probably don't need access to those things. And if you want to have access to those things, you can find them. But it just takes a little bit of elbow grease, uh, and you should be able to. So thanks for hanging out, and then I'm Rod Lennox. See you later.